All right, what's going on, everybody? Rob Satram, Feedback Ranch, your Brave Carrot. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the Synology 10 gigabyte, 10 gigabit setup. And I tell you what, the reason why I want to talk about this is because I bought a Synology and you might be a video editor, right? And if you're a video editor, you're probably trying to do 10 gigabit per second editing. And you're probably looking at something like the Synology or the QNAP. And I just want to walk you through the basics of this. So um, you can read the article underneath here or that's attached in the YouTube video. But here's the deal, man. If you're trying to do 10 gigabit per second editing, um, the beauty of these things, obviously, if you've been doing your homework, you can put in multiple drives. You put fast drives in there and they can do a RAID configuration so that if one or two of the hard drives go bad, you don't lose all your information. Plus, it's a very economical way for you to get a ton of storage, right? Here's what I didn't know. When you buy a NAS or a network attached storage, um, if you look at this little setup here, this is what I ended up learning. But what you don't know is that these NAS devices, um, which I ended up going with the Synology DS1618 Plus, and there's also a lot of QNAP stuff out there. Um, I ended up choosing this because it had a, a great review, but here's what I didn't know. Almost no network attached storage or NASes allow you to just direct connect through USB. I've been using, you know, I've got a Mac and a Windows machine, a couple of MacBook Pros, and our editing team usually likes to use the Thunderbolt 3 ports, and you'll read on some of these that they have Thunderbolt 3. The first thing you need to know is that you cannot direct connect a NAS device to your computer. It has to be networked. Well, the advantage of that is that when they're networked, you're going to be able to actually um, hook up a whole bunch of computers and access them together so that if you had a team of people editing or a couple of devices, they can do that. But here's what you need to know. The bottom line is you're going to end up buying much more than just the network attached storage. So you buy the NAS, you buy the hard drives. Then what happens is you have to realize that inside of this, the switch on the back does not have 10 gigabit per second connections. It has one gigabit per second or one GB or, or gigabit. You'll see a lot of gigabit stuff. You know, five, six years ago, gigabit was much better than your regular Cat5 or whatever. So right off the bat, you'll want to, when you're shopping, look about what kind of card you need to actually get the 10 gigabit per second. Now, Synology has a PCI Express slot, and it's just like a computer. You can throw this in a computer as well. This has that 10 gigabit per second Ethernet that you'd put inside of the device. Now, once you do that, you're going to have to put hard drives in it. I really recommend looking at the, the Iron Wolf. I did lots of homework. Sounds like Iron Wolf, the 7200 RPM hard drives are a good value. They are a little bit more expensive, but they're meant to be running for long periods of time and to be accessed. And it, the last thing you want is hard drives to get broken. Well, it, here's the other thing is that your computer almost guaranteed does not have a 10 gigabit Ethernet receiver. So first we have to put this receiver on the device. Then you have to have the receiver on your computer. Now, OWC Thunderbolt, can you tell I'm from Minnesota? OWC Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabit Ethernet switch adapter. This works pretty well. Thunderbolt 3 to Ethernet. Now here's what I found out. This is specifically Thunderbolt 3. This worked on my newer MacBook Pros. It did not work on my um, Lenovo from a couple of years ago that has USB 3.1. This is a specific Thunderbolt. When you're snooping around, this is not easy to find. So this does not work on most old um, computers that don't have specifically Thunderbolt. Even though supposedly USB 3.0 and everything are the same, they are not. But you could plug this into a MacBook Pro, and you can then have the Ethernet. Well, then you'd think, okay, I can just direct connect, which is true. However, what most people don't know is that you're going to want some sort of switch so that you can get your router on the internet or your, your NAS onto the internet. Okay, so the idea here, this is a switch. So most people don't know that you have a, a router, which takes your modem, and then you plug your modem into your router. Or sometimes they're contained together, and those are sending out wireless internet, right? Well, if you want to connect more than one computer via the 10 gigabit Ethernet, or if you want to have Internet running to your NAS, you're going to have to do something here, okay? You're going to need a switch, and the switch you're going to want to have as 10 gigabit per second. So what you're going to find out is this stuff is expensive. There's a ton of reviews out there. This little one from Microtik is about the best value that I could find, right? So this is $129. 
I received this thing. I didn't look close enough because when this came, this is a great value. You plug it in. It's a simple switch. And the way this will work is you're going to plug in your um, internet right here. And then you're going to plug in the NAS in your computer and other computers into this, right? And then that's going to allow for more connections. Now, this is only four, but if you look, it says SFP plus there. This, those are not Ethernet ports. I did not know that. I, I got this thing. Those are not Cat 6, Cat 5 or anything. So what I had to do was you have to get these SFP plus adapters. Um, so basically, when you move up from your consumer end networking into the higher end networking, what you're going to find is that things get expensive and they get very foreign and weird. And most of us consumer people don't know what this is. These little adapters, you'd have to buy one, two, three or four of them, depending on how many connections, you know, one for the NAS for sure. And then one for your computer. And these guys aren't super expensive, but they're not cheap. Um, oh, that's great. They change. So they're, they're still out there. Um, I'll have to update that link. That's kind of funny. Anyways, the idea is you have to buy these little adapters. The next thing you're going to need to know is that you cannot use Cat5 cable. You need at minimum what's called Cat6e. As the numbers go up, goes their speed. So the higher the number, the faster. What's cool now is for most places, if you go and check out on Amazon, you can get fairly inexpensive Cat6, Cat8. These were a two-pack of 10 for $20. So they were $10 each. Again, if you're doing long um, 10 gigabit compliant, you're going to want to do CAT6E, not CAT5. You have to have cables, receivers, switches. Everything needs to be 10 gigabit bit per second. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, I ended up, um, my router is in the middle of my house. That's where my cable modem is. I don't have cable that's run everywhere throughout my house that, that works with the internet. So I ended up putting my router... And then plugging my router into this, the other end over in the other room where the NAS was. And then you can plug in your Ethernet and that will carry the Ethernet connection or Internet connection across your regular um, electrical wires. It actually works pretty well. I've had pretty good luck with it. So that's the gear that I've had to get so that I could have 10 gigabit per second um, performance. And I'll tell you, I ended up going with I think I've got four of these right now. And it's fast. It is not quite as fast as my external SSDs through Thunderbolt, but we can do 4K, 10-bit, large files, large projects on Adobe Premiere, and they, they operate at like 400 megabyte per second. They are very fast. It's very secure. It just works. Um, but the thing that you don't know is that it has to be networked. Now, I am... If you take a look at this, QNAP is the other company. So I wish I would have learned this. QNAP has a feature that's called their USB. When you come to QNAP and you go to products and you go to storage, you can go to their all storage products. They have a thing called USB Quick Connect. Now, if you had the USB Quick Connect down here on the corner, you go to connections and then come down here to the USB Quick Connect Access. You'll see that they're new. They have a version that just went out that's black. This is their newer one. So you have an 8 drive, 6 drive, and 4 drive. And I want to say they're like $600, $800, $1,200. What these have, though, is there's a USB port on the front that will allow you to direct connect right there to your computer and get, and you won't need all of that Ethernet stuff. Right? There's an advantage to using the Ethernet that multiple people can use it. You can get the Internet on there. But if I were to go back and redo this, I really would have wanted to look at the QNAP. Now, Synology had really good reviews. It's hard to know what's legit out there and what's not. But this model, um, this TVS673, just look for QNAP with this Quick Connect. I wish I would have known that. And I did a ton of homework, so it can get confusing. If you're looking at buying this stuff, guys, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you use my Amazon links. I get a little commission out of that. That would be fun. Um, I've already had a bunch of it. Check out Brave Carrot Photography. This is where I'm writing all the things that we learn about gear right here so that you can understand. Good luck. God bless. Like and subscribe. Take care.